Greetings, I'm Brian from RC Work Haven. Welcome to part three of the Fendura hull design experiment. In part one, we took a look at the overall design. We looked at how it could be built without frames and easily on any flat surface. In part two, we took the boat down to the lake and it performed very well under power and was very predictable. So here in part three, we're going to test this hull out under sail. The sail is adjustable. So let's take this boat down to the lake and see how she does under sail. Thanks for watching. So now here's the same Fendura model with the same weight inside under power. So if you like to experiment with RC hull designs, the Fendur model is a great place to start. Let's get back to the sailing. So here's the Fendura back on the table. There's a few things I did notice about the sail test. The first one is the boat is extremely tender. With four pounds of ballast down at the bottom of the keel, interior, the boat still didn't have enough stability to prevent the railing from going underwater, even with the slightest gust. A way around it, could be to use lead and the lead itself could be further down and more concentrated at the bottom of the keel. But still at four pounds of lead, the boat only has so much stability. Now it could be the size of my sail area. It could be the balance of the boat generally, but I think that it would have to be a different design or a different, a different way of handling the ballast and possibly a different sailing rig to make this a real functional RC sailboat. I think that it performed much better as a powerboat than it did as a sailboat. So here's a view of the hull interior. Here's the boom on the uh, mainsail. And I have a piece of fishing tackle here attached to a two millimeter cord. And the cord goes down through the hull through a brass tubing, 5 sixteenths of an inch. The line continues over to the sail servo arm. Now this arm is made from uh, chain link fence reinforcing fiberglass, which measures uh, one half inch wide by one quarter of an inch thick. I have this bolted onto a standard plastic servo that comes with an inexpensive MG996R servo. And I have the same servo for steering and the sail. Ch the channel six position here on my Dumbo RC transmitter. I've drilled holes here in that uh, piece of fiberglass and I'm using the end hole, which when it swings just clears the side of the hull over here. And uh, it worked fairly well. It does about uh, 45 degrees in each direction. So uh, that gave, you, gave me, I think it was six and a half inches total, uh, total adjustment on the sails. So I'll just show you here.
And I had no problems with the line getting hung up and so on, or, or any problems with the actual power. But then again, I was in pretty light, light airs for the uh, sail test. And this is obviously not a racing arrangement. For the test, I had about four pounds of weight placed on the, on the floor of the keel. The half inch dowel mast goes through the deck and I've made a kind of a shoe here down at the base. And uh, I formed that out of Bondo with a piece of wood going across the front. And uh, that hole lines up with a hole inside the mast. And I use a cotter pin on a string and I just push that in so that the uh, mast won't lift out for any reason. Another idea that I would probably use again in the future is a mast supported down on the bottom in a hull without any rigging because that does make things a lot simpler and it saves a lot of time. And uh, the, there's plenty of uh, strength in a half inch dowel for a model this size. Another little modification I did up top here at deck level is I raised up the uh, railing and uh, it, it now measures about three eighths of an inch high total but I chopped out spots for scuppers here, and I'm glad I did because this this uh, this railing was under underwater quite a few times. In fact, at, at one point I even took a little bit of water below. It didn't damage anything, but uh, anybody who does experiment under sail with the Fendure model would want to make sure that the hatch opening is quite small or sealed in some manner. My original uh, propeller for the part two power test was the standard 42 millimeter OD nylon prop. But for the sailing uh, test, I decided to change that into a 36 millimeter prop. So it's a bit smaller. And I was hoping to cut down on drag a little bit. Uh, it probably uh, was a little bit better, but I think this hull is so easily driven that even that amount of um, resistance here on, on the stern end probably affected sailing performance. If this area had no prop, and as a sailing version, this was filled in here with uh, dead wood, it may have sailed quite a bit better. But that's something for future experiments. I, I do notice, though, that even the 36 millimeter prop would push this hull way over hull speed. So that's plenty for this design. So that brings us to the end of part three and this short series. I had a lot of fun working on this experimental design and it was very satisfying because the hull was so easily built. Some of my viewers could also be interested in experimental hulls like this. Uh, if you are, put it in the uh, comments section. I could supply this as a PDF if there's enough interest. Thanks for watching.